Hello everyone, in this video I want to introduce you to um, Teams inside Reflet. So Teams is what we are going to be using for our particular uh, assignment. So this is a place where we can post assignments, instructors can post assignments and as a class you can take those assignments, there can be units for you to like go through, like content is all like assembled here. So that is what Teams is all about. Not only that I can provide you feedback for your code in the particular line number where I see a problem or if you have any doubts you can ask me directly in Replit and that is why I want to like try out um, Teams this time. So this is the name of the team we are going to be using for this course. So I can I have a link if you go into your course you can see that is the link here that you can see. This is the link you have to click whether you have an account in Replit or not. So when you click on this, it will take you to a prompt in Replit asking you either to log in or create a new account. So if you are you already familiar with Replit, you don't have to create a new account. If you are not familiar with Replit, you've never used it before, make sure you create an account after you click this because see this is a link to join. You can see here it says join. So you once you sign up or log in to Replit, in your student um, dashboard um, when you go into Replit, you can see the name of this team, Summer 2022 Summer C Sharp. So you want to like be inside that particular environment. Inside that environment, you can see some projects here. There's a demo, then it says Unit 1, and then Unit 1 Lab. So let me explain. This demo is just a demo code um, that I want you to like try things out basically as to like how we are going to be going about this. So what you would do is you will see demo, you click on demo and that is the code. Okay, you can make modifications to this demo once you are in the IDE. So let me show how, what I mean by that. So, so I am logged in as a teacher. So if I log in as a student, Okay, now I am logged in as a student, you can see that there. So when I go into Teams, in this IDE you can see there is a team called 2022 Summer C Sharp. So when you click on the link and you log into Replit, this is what you would see as a student. When you click on this, you can see that the course is organized as you see here. Because we are in the student view, it tells you to start the project. So no need to worry. The only code you have to modify your startup for each and every week is going to be anything that is listed as a lab. The rest of that is available so you can look at it and understand what the content is all about. Okay, very first week, um, we have two labs. Okay, one is the demo one. You have to actually go and try a few things and play some screenshots. So you click on start project. When you say this, it will fork this um, demo and you can see on the top, you can see this demo v two one main. Here, here's how the startup looks. So it tells you there is a test. You have to run the test to check your work. Okay. So let's see. So let's look at the IDE because I'm sure most of you are not familiar with this. So this is a beautiful integrated development environment that you can directly use as long as you're connected to the internet. You do not need to down, download any code. So you can see on the left here, you see that is the panel for your file view. The middle has opened main.cs, that is our file. CS means C sharp. On the right side, you can see the console. The console is going to be just a basic window shell that is going to show you the output and also take input. Okay, now this, I've written two lines of code. So what's going to happen is, there's a big green button on top that says run. When I say click on the red big green button, you click on this run, see what happens. It is waiting for you to say something. You have to say hi and then hello world. Okay, this is what the program does. It takes an input, it gives you an output and that's it. This is just to get you familiar with what this IDE looks like. Next step is you have to go and click on this check mark on the left side called tests. You click on that, there is a test, demo test. You run the test. This is my way of ensuring that your code meets some requirements. Okay, what are those requirements? Let's see the results. It says expected output is hello world and then actual output is hello world. So there you go. 
let us see to make this test fail that is not our intention but if we change something in the code that it's not supposed to behave like and you run the test the test will tell you that your output is wrong see it says it's failed so usually when you get a lab a test will be written for the lab you have to make sure that you write the code as per the requirement and then run the test if the test is failing there could be a bug in your code okay so this is your way of knowing whether you are going to be scoring for your lab or not okay so the third thing i want to show you is on line six this is for your instructions you have to right click and say start thread what this means is let us say i have an i have an issue here so i wrote hello world i ran my test Let us run the test. <clears throat> so the test failed, right? Let us say that you do not know why it failed. You are unable to understand why this test failed. You want to ask me the question. Normally you would email me. So in this situation you don't have to. All you do is you right click and say start thread. And then you say I don't know why this line fails. And then you click on that. Okay, basically what this does when you click the, basically when you put this comment what happens is your instructor will get notified, okay, saying that hey your student has said something, for example let me log out and then log back in as myself. Okay, there's the message. It tells me these two one left a message. When I click on that, it takes me right to the line and says there is something of a comment here. I can look at it. I don't know why this line fails. Okay, so I can look at your code, run the test, and then look at the results. And say oh you forgot the semicolon okay and I can go here and I can say you forgot the semicolon at the end of the message try that so if when I put that message if you log in as a user like a student you can see that message right there so we don't have to communicate in emails when you have an issue with your code so what i would do if i were a student in this class i would go to blackboard okay and i'll watch the demo videos i will come in here and you open that unit if it is unit one or unit two i'll open that unit i will open lesson.md because that is what gives me all the references I need. Let it be on the right side. Then I'll open main.cs. So you can see main.cs in the middle and then lesson.md. Main.cs is going to have all the code that I did a demo on my video. And then this on the right side, lesson.md gives you all the content reference material, online uh, educational resources that you can refer to along with some summary. So you have all the help you need with your syntax or with examples code everything okay so you can run my demo code without actually having to modify my code when you go into the actual lab itself again you will just say okay i am an instructor view now let me go back to the student view So okay. 
I go into lab one. So all the instructions for this particular lab will be available on the right automatically. It will tell you what you're supposed to do for lab one. Instructions are here. Okay. And then when you run the code, the output is in the console. Pay attention to this area. So if you want the instruction, click on this. If you want to see the output, click here. Okay. When you, when you make changes and you're all done, everything is good. Click on the test here. Run the code. When your tests run good, your code is good, you are very confident everything is good. What you do is you submit here on the right corner, top right corner you can see the submit. So you have to click on the submit and also you have to copy this and then so you paste the link here just in case I have trouble. So you always want to make those two steps, okay? Okay, thanks and have a great day, bye.